May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Today we're giving thanks for the life of Giovanni Basco, um, an Italian, Turin, Italy, mid-19th century. Uh, Giovanni is was someone who's really talented, especially as a teacher. And so he, because he was uh, not just a talented teacher, but also someone from himself, kind of the ruling class, he was assigned to be a teacher in a very elite girls' school. He was not happy. <laughs> and he kept going out of the school and seeing all these kids on the street and knowing that they had no opportunity to get anything like the kind of education that he was giving to the young ladies who were a part of his class. And so he started starting these classes on the side and wound up actually raising up through them eventually a generation of ordained leaders, not from the upper classes, but really people who had been formerly street kids. It became an order called the Silesians, and they literally changed the face of the church. And the Italian leaders reluctantly acknowledged what it was that Giovanni Bosco was doing because he was not, in essence, doing what they had wanted him to do. But they could not deny the success of his ministry. I want to call Giovanni the patron saint of youth workers. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's true in an official sense, but it, it, it certainly makes sense to me. And so, in essence, what the readings are about has, have everything to do with what I would describe as the ministry of teaching. In other words, teaching that really seeks to, as we said in the Collect, um, remember we pray, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Teaching that worthily magnifies God and his work. And so it's, I asked the question, well, what does it mean to be a teacher like that? Well, it seems to me to be a teacher like that, the teacher's gifts are not merely the teacher's library, research, and the mastery of subject, but someone who actually, so in that mastery, interacts with the subject in a way that actually changes the human life and the human heart, so that what comes out of the teacher is not merely the dissemination of facts, but a kind of heartfelt personal passion. He has disciplined himself to give himself entirely to the subject in a way that makes him no armchair teacher, but literally someone who has been transformed by the subject that he teaches. It seems to me that's the heart of the discipline that Paul lays out in Philippians when he says, Therefore, whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, in the Greek, place your mind on these things. In other words, and it's an important discipline for us to think about because, of course, we live in a world where every single kind of knowledge in the world, good, bad, and different, wicked, and glorious, is literally all available at the touch of a keystroke. So in the light of extraordinary options available to us at every turn, where are we in fact going to spend our time? Where are we going to park our brains? Well, it seems to me that if a part of what you desire or I desire is to be one who worthily magnifies God's holy name through what it is that I do, that I take on, in essence, a discipline that sets me free to spend the majority of my imagination on the very things that Paul commands. Imagination is powerful. And one of the things that makes a teacher really worth his or her salt is that what they do is imaginative. But to do that, imagination has to be harnessed. It, it can't be sort of all over the place like this. Instead, there has to be, you know, I really want to spend the focus of, 
my imagination and my brain, the things that I read, the study, the way I interact with people, in a way that actually allows what God has placed inside of me, the things that I've learned and comprehended and worked on and studied, to flow out in a way that actually changes my hearers, even in the same way that the subject has changed me. And that does require more than merely the mastery of the subject. It requires a life discipline, a discipline that continues to give oneself to the very best so that you know how to think reflectively, to ask not just the obvious question, but the second or third question. God is beginning to teach you what it means to love God, not only with your heart and soul, but also with your mind. And that, it seems to me, is the fruit of living, in essence, within the boundaries of the thing that Paul commands in 1 Corinthians. So that we, in fact, can be the kind of teachers, because the word really is teacher, the translation that Christie read, and it's right in terms of the NRSV. Therefore, every scribe, replace teacher, because that's what it means, who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven, is like a master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. In other words, the teacher in this sense, who has walked in this kind of life, has the capacity, both out of his library as well as out of his heart, to bring the very best of what it is that he can offer, whether he's quoting someone from the fourth century or today's edition of the paper, whether he talks about an experience that happened when he was six or something that happened just yesterday. In other words, there is a breadth and a depth, an historic depth, of what he brings to the subject precisely because he has lived within the confines of God I desire above all else that I live in such a way that somehow I worthily magnify your holy name. And that becomes the way you approach how you live, and especially in the mastery of that which you are given to teach. So, it is for that that we give thanks for Giovanni Basco, because given himself to that, how, he could, how could he not notice, you see, what the kids in the street were not getting? because that's as much a part of God's heart as the very excellent instruction being provided for his well-to-do students, because everyone matters in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so to see that is, in some ways, the very fruit of what it is that Paul describes working in Giovanni's life. In some ways, that is the proof that he is someone worthy of commendation and why these readings have been picked. So even as I think about my own life or our lives, I come back again and again to sort of the job description of 1 Corinthians 4. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, that the God of peace may be with you. Amen. Amen. Amen.